The Princess and the Demon from Ancient Egyptian Legends by Margaret Alice Murray, first published in 1913. Read by Frank Blissett. It was in the reign of King Ramesses, son of the sun, beloved of Amon, king of the gods. A mighty warrior was Ramesses, in the day of battle like to Mentu, god of war. Very valorous was he, like the son of the sky goddess. Now his majesty was in Nahara-inna, where the great river Euphrates rolls down to the sea, and he received the tribute of the vassal princes, for he was the conqueror of the nine archer tribes, and none could stand before his face when he came forth equipped with all his weapons of war. The princes prostrated themselves before him, bowing their foreheads to the ground, breathing the earth which his feet had trodden. Great and splendid was their tribute, gold and precious stones of all colors, blue lapis lazuli and the green turquoise sacred to Hathor, goddess of love and joy and slaves came bearing on their backs sweet-scented woods, perfumed and aromatic, like the trees in the land of the gods. The prince of Bechten came also, and with him his eldest daughter, and he placed her in front of the slaves, for she was the choicest part of his tribute. Very beautiful was she, fair in her limbs, tall and slender as a palm tree, and the heart of the king turned to her with delight, and he loved her more than anything on earth. He made her the great royal wife, and he gave her a name by which she should be known in the land of Egypt, Neferu Ra, Beauty of Ra, was she called, for her beauty was like the shining of the sun. And the name was written in the royal oval, as is the custom of the kings of Egypt and their queens. Then King Ramesses returned to Egypt, and with him went the great royal wife, Queen Neferu Ra. And when they came to the black land, the land of Egypt, she performed all the ceremonies of a queen in the temples of Egypt. Now it happened that King Ramesses was in Thebes the Mighty on the twenty-second of the month Paini. And he went into the temple of Amman, for this was the day of the beautiful festival of the god, when the boats go up and down upon the water with torches and lights, and the sacred bark, adorned with gold and painted with glorious colors, is borne aloft, that men may see the figure of Amun-Ra himself within. And Queen Neferu Ra was with his majesty, for the great royal wife in Egypt has ever been the worshipper of Amun Ra, king of the gods. There came into the temple courtiers of the king to announce the arrival of a messenger from the prince of Bechten. Loaded was he with gifts for Neferu Ra, queen of Egypt daughter of the prince of Bechten, and he carried also a message to the king. When he entered the royal presence, he bowed to the earth, saying, Glory to thee, O son of the nine archer tribes, may we live before thee. Then he bowed to the earth again, and spoke the message that he had brought from the prince of Bechten to Ramesses, king of Egypt. 
I come to thee, O living king, my lord, on account of Bentreshi, the little sister of the great royal wife, neferu -ra, for there is a malady in all her limbs. Send therefore a learned man, that he may see and heal her. The king turned to his courtiers and said, Bring hither a scribe of the house of life, and bring also those who speak the hidden things of the inner chamber. And the courtiers hastened, and brought them into the presence forthwith. And the king said to them, I have brought you hither to hear this matter. Tell me then of a man, learned and skillful, to send to the prince of Berten. Then they took counsel among themselves as to a learned and skillful man, and they brought the scribe Tehuti Emheb before the king. And the king bade him go with the messenger of the prince of Berten to heal Bent Reshi, the little sister of the great royal wife. When the scribe Tehuti Emheb came to Berten, he was brought into the presence of Bent Reshi. He was a learned and skillful man, and he found the princess under the dominion of a spirit, a spirit that was hostile to him, against whom his learning and skill were of no avail, who set his magic arts at naught. Then the prince of Berten was sad, and sorrow was in his heart. But Tehuti Emheb the scribe counseled him to send again to Egypt, and to implore the help of Hansu, the expeller of demons, to cast out the evil spirit from Bent Reshi, the little sister of the great royal wife. Now so great was the distance from Berchen to Egypt that from the time that Tehuti Emheb the scribe departed out of Thebes till the second message came to King Ramesses was three years, and throughout that time the evil spirit dwelt in Bent Reshi and would not be cast out. And when the second messenger arrived, King Ramesses was again in Thebes, and it was the first of the month Pachons, the month that is sacred to Hansu. He entered into the temple, and with him came his courtiers and the messenger of the prince of Berten. In the temple were two statues of Hansu, very marvelous figures were these, very sacred, very holy. The one was called Hansu in Thebes Neferotep, and the other Hansu the Expeller of Demons. Now Hansu is the god of the moon, the son of Amun-Ra and of Mut, lady of Ashru, and men represent him with the curled lock of youth, for he is ever young and beautiful. Then the king stood before the great statue of Hansu in Thebes Neferotep, and said, O oh, my good lord, I come again into thy presence on account of the daughter of the prince of Berten. Then the priests lifted the statue of Hansu in Thebes Neferotep and placed it in front of Hansu, the expeller of demons. And the king spoke again before Hansu in Thebes Neferotep and said, My good lord, turn thy face to Hansu, the expeller of demons. Grant that he may go to Berten. Hansu in Thebes Neferotep inclined his head twice in token of assent. Very marvelous was the figure of Hansu in Thebes Neferotep. And yet again King Ramesses spoke, Let thy protection be with him. 
Grant that I may send the majesty of Hansu to Bechten to save Bent Reshi, the little sister of the great royal wife. Han Su in Thebes Netherotep inclined his head twice in token of assent. Very marvelous was the figure of Han Su in Thebes Netherotep, and he gave his magical protection four times to Han Su, the expeller of demons. Then King Ramses gave command, and Han Su, the expeller of demons, was placed in the great boat, and around the great boat were five small boats, with chariots and horses, numerous and splendid, on the right hand and on the left. The retinue of Han Su, the expeller of demons, was the retinue of a king. For a year and five months they journeyed, until they reached Bechten. The prince of Bechten came out with his bowmen and his courtiers to meet Hensu, the expeller of demons, with a royal welcome, and they entered into his presence as into the presence of a king. The prince of Bechten fell on his knees and laid his forehead on the ground at the feet of Hansu, the expeller of demons, and said, Thou hast come to us. Oh, be kind to us according to the words of Ramesses, king of Egypt. They brought Hansu, the expeller of demons, to the chamber of Bent Reshi, the little sister of the great royal wife, and he made a magical protection over her. Lo, there happened a wonder and a marvel, for she was well and whole in a moment. Then the spirit who had been in her spoke in the presence of Hansu, the expeller of demons. Thou hast come in peace, O great God, expeller of demons. Bechten is thy city, its people are thy slaves. I bow before thee, for I also am thy slave. I will go to that place from which I came, that thy heart may have peace. But ere I go, let the majesty of Hansu give command that a holy day be made for me by the prince of Bechten. When he had heard these words, Hansu, the expeller of demons, inclined his head to the priest and said, let the prince of Bechten make a great sacrifice for this spirit. The prince of Bechten and his soldiers and his courtiers heard the voices of the spirit and of the god, and they trembled and were exceedingly afraid. They obeyed the command of the god and prepared a great sacrifice for Hansu, the expeller of demons, and for the spirit that came out of Bent Reshi, the little sister of the great royal wife, the daughter of the prince of Bechten. And they made a holy day with offerings, sacrifices, and libations. So the spirit, in the form of a shining one, went his way in peace out of the land of Bechten, and he went whithersoever it pleased him, as Hansu, the expeller of demons, had commanded. The prince of Bechten was glad, and his heart rejoiced, and all the people rejoiced also that the spirit had been driven out of Bent Reshi, and out of the land of Bechten. But in the midst of his joy and gladness, fear came upon the heart of the prince of Bechten, lest the spirit should return and take up his abode again in the land, when Hensu, the expeller of demons, had departed. He took counsel with himself, and said, I will keep Hensu, the expeller of demons, in Bechten. I will not let him return to Egypt. 
So Han Su, the expeller of demons, remained three years, four months, and five days in Bechten, for the prince of Bechten would not let him go. And at the end of that time, the prince of Bechten lay upon his bed at night and slept, and while he slept, a vision passed before his eyes. He dreamed that he stood before the shrine of Hansu, the expeller of demons. The great doors of the shrine were folded back, and the god came forth, stepping out between the doors. He changed into the form of a hawk with feathers of gold, burnished and beautiful, and soared high into the air with wings outspread, and like an arrow he darted towards Egypt. When the prince of Bechten awoke, he was exceedingly afraid, for he feared the wrath of the gods. And he sent for the priest of Hansu, the expeller of demons, and said to him, The god is estranged from us. He has returned to Egypt. Let his chariot also return to Egypt. The prince of Bechten gave command that the god should be taken back to Egypt, and he loaded the god with gifts. Great and numerous were the gifts of all manner of beautiful things that the prince of Bechten gave to Hansu, the expeller of demons. For many months they journeyed, and with them went an escort of soldiers and horses from the land of Bechten. They arrived in safety at Thebes, and entered into the temple of Hansu in Thebes' Netherotep. Then Hansu, the expeller of demons, gave to Hansu in Thebes Netherotep all the gifts, the rich and costly gifts, which he had received from the prince of Bechten. Nothing did he keep for himself. Thus ended the journey of Hansu, the expeller of demons, the great god. That was The Princess and the Demon, from Ancient Egyptian Legends, by Margaret Alice Murray, first published in 1913, read by Frank Blissett. And if you enjoyed what you heard, please like, subscribe, and share.